everyone, and welcome to this special edition of In the Kitchen. This week we are celebrating our first LibCon or Library Comic Con at the Westland Public Library, and I'm so happy to be demonstrating Cook Korean by Robin Ha. Um, this is a so wonderfully illustrated cookbook uh, about how this woman, Robin, came to learn uh, quite late in life uh, how to cook Korean food. Her mom used to cook it all the time. She'd be able to make up recipes off the top of her head and implement that. And it was really later that her daughter came along, wanted to learn things, but couldn't because there was no written instructions. So she carefully documented all of her mother's uh, cooking and teaching techniques and she started to work on it herself and this is the result. Um, there will be some screenshots throughout this in celebration. I really also wanted to celebrate this because there's a lot of great Korean comic books coming out. Um, a lot of them are actually on web comics. You have things like Omniescent or Navarilla like a butterfly which has been converted into a uh, Netflix live action movie. And they're all easily accessible right now. Um, they're called manguas, which are basically Korean uh, mangas. And I apologize if I just totally butchered that. Um, but I wanted to celebrate this emergence and proliferation of Korean comic books and their accessibility online, as well as accessibility in our library. So today we are going to be making a sweet porridge. Um, this is actually called uh, Hapbok Juk. Um, a nice screenshot should be running over the screen at this time. Um, to get started, it had us cooking at least two pounds of kabocha uh, pumpkin, which is right here. Our wonderful cameraman turned and demonstrated these lovely looking seeds. Uh, but um, what you're going to do is basically boil them until they become soft. And then you're going to remove the skin of the pumpkin. And once it's cool enough to handle, you're then going to blend it. Um, additionally, we have um, some sweet rice flour. Now I found this at Safeway. Um, it was actually quite expensive, and since we live so close to Awajimaya, as well as H Mart, I also recommend, if you have the opportunity, they are both wonderful stores, to visit them. You will probably find a larger quantity that is cheaper, but this is what we had locally. Um, this recipe also has says using ongsimi, which are little rice balls, also using sweet uh, rice flour, but you get to make them yourself. This recipe is also included in this uh, cookbook. It's on page 108, and we're going to actually start by doing that right now. Um, I'm not sure if you can find those actually in the store, but um, since she provided such an easy recipe to make at home, I'm going to give this a try. Um, you're going to start by adding about five tablespoons of uh, very hot water to your rice, and then you're going to stir it. Now I have it, it's right here. Um, she recommends one tablespoon at a time until it all becomes incorporated. Now this is kind of a smaller tablespoon, so I'm doing kind of two and eyeballing it. You think I would have been smart enough and just gotten my tablespoon, but it's what I had at my kitchen set, so. And then um, as we're going along, you're, well, you're looking for it to form into a ball. And of course, what's really great about this is if it's not forming for you, you just keep adding water, like a lot of doughs and, and uh, like pie crust and stuff like that. There's a lot of forgiveness, luckily. Especially with mine, since I'm not measuring it out uh, formally, um, there might be some discrepancies because that was uh, four or five <laughs> tablespoons. <laughs> and uh, sorry. Yeah, four. <laughs> As you can see, it's still a little clumpy, so we need to add a little bit more. The ingredients are listed down in the comments section, so you should be able to access the full amount. Um, you can also check this book out from our local library. If you do not live in our system, we have this ability to access books from other libraries if it's not in your system. Um, so talk to your local librarian about that. Sorry, it's still looking pretty dry. And what may have happened is uh, I was putting together the ingredients between cooking sessions. And so there's a good chance I accidentally added more flour than what was called for. And um, that's why I have to add more water. And through the power of magic, we'll just, <laughs> filming magic, we'll speed this up. 
right about now. You are looking for a Play-Doh-like consistency, so for those who have made Play-Doh at home, this should be very familiar. This is still feeling a little bit, oh no. You want to keep, and basically, since I have it here, you can see that's still a little bit crumbly and still a little bit sticky, but I'm going to incorporate it just a little bit more to see. You know, and it says um, wait until it's cool enough to handle to knead it together. Um, if you have calluses, much like a hard cook, even home cooks have, then you probably could have done this from the beginning. I have my water starting to become warm just because it takes so much longer to heat up our water here. Um, so that's why you may have heard a beep there. Okay, so this is actually feeling pretty good now. As you can see, it easily gathers into a ball. And then this is asking you to form let me move this. Little balls that you'll be adding. Um, about that size, uh, it says you should get about 20 balls. Of course, that depends on your chunks that you create. I didn't measure these out fully, as you can see, so I'm doing approximations. So I have about 20. Some are a little, <laughs> sorry about that bigger than others um, but otherwise yeah that was very easy to parse out these are all super cute i love them for the time being though i'm going to place these here while we discuss the rest of the uh preparation i'm just going to go super quick since the longest part was actually cooking the uh, kapocha get that out of the way i'm gonna just wash my hands for this Two seconds while I wash my hands. Be right back. Okay, welcome back. Uh, so right now we just completed the ongzimi balls, which turned out very beautifully. They coated my hands spectacularly, so I'm assuming they're going to hold together quite nicely as they go into the pot and boil. What comes next is we're going to create a quick slurry. This is also out of the sweet, uh, um, the sweet flour. Sweet rice flour, there we go, <laughs> my apologies. So this has us adding about a cup uh, of water to the sweet rice. And I wanted to do that before we went too much farther, just to kind of get that out of the way. I didn't want to do that too early for the camera just because I didn't want it to turn into an unforeseen thing. I, I'm not very familiar with sweet rice flour despite the fact that I co love cooking Korean food. I love bibimbap, which is, you know, I, I don't, yeah, it, it's delicious. You should give it a try. There's some fantastic recipes out there. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to add our blended kabocha into this pot. Um, this has four cups of water in it, uh, five cups overall with that cup that just went into our slurry. We are going to, luckily it's cool enough, and this is cool enough that even if it splashes back, I don't have to worry about being scalded, as I would have had to earlier. Um, it's just, sorry, it's just so beautifully orange and lovely this time of year. Um, it smelled wonderful cooking. Everybody commented on it and how just delicious just this cooking was. Um, so I highly recommend, even if you want something that's just seasonably beautiful, making yourself something beautiful with a pumpkin, a kapocha pumpkin. Okay. In retrospect, I realize the spatula would have been better. <laughs> yeah. Just a little, but that should be okay. Okay, give that a good mix in, start the incorporation pro uh, process. And so what you're going to do is you're going to start to bring these things to a boil. Um, I'm going to start that right now since my oven is a little slow. Um, yours is probably going to cook much faster at home and you won't be doing it for a audience. So cook at your leisure. I'm going to just put that right there. Okay, so next we're going to add our slurry. This was the rice flour slurry. Some things didn't get as incorporated as I would like, but that will be fine in the grand scheme of things. 
And then, so this recipe actually calls for quite a bit of sugar. I have three tablespoons of cane sugar as well as three um, tablespoons of, uh, it calls for brown sugar, which I was assuming was light brown sugar. Uh, I would be fascinated to know what it tastes like with the dark brown sugar. Um, you can leave a comment in the section below if you gave that a try. But generally when it's not designated, I tend to go with the light brown sugar, although I, for the first attempt, although often I will follow up with dark brown sugar just because I like the caramely molasses that uh, is provoked in that. Okay. We will get a close-up shot. It just looks so beautiful. What is going to go on now after I add the um, onzimi balls is it's going to thicken up thanks to that slurry and it's going to cook for about 15 minutes. So during that time, um, I hope you enjoy these slides of the book. And welcome back. So it's been 15 minutes almost on the dot. The soup had a very glossy coating, which was to be expected, and it thickened up in, like quite nicely. Uh, actually, almost instantaneous before it got into a high uh, boil did I see it start to thicken. The rice, little rice balls that we made with the sweet rice flour, those actually fell to the bottom pretty quickly and then started to pop back up to the top. So I just recommend keeping an eye on those, making sure that they don't stay on the bottom too much or else, uh, much like I found, they kind of stuck and then you had to scrape it off, which didn't turn out terrible. I caught it just in time, but just wanted to give you a heads up not to walk off too quickly before letting it just come to a simmer. So this has been cooling now for just a, a couple minutes and um, I was going to give it a taste. Now there's a couple of recommended garnishes. This includes pine nuts. This includes black sesame seeds. Now mistakenly I got toasted sesame seeds which should still be delicious. Unfortunately it's not going to be that beautiful like black um, um, specks over the uh, orange that is really appealing in some of these soups. It also calls for red dates. Now the dates in her picture are bright red. Uh, my my dates aren't as pretty of red as it was illustrated. Um, there probably are some really vibrant varieties out there. This is what was available locally, so I stuck with what was available locally. But let's dig in. I'm quite curious to know what it tastes like. I, I had a couple samplings, but now that I can actually dig in, I'm actually quite curious. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. Yeah, if you really like pumpkin, this is a good recipe. Um, for all those pumpkin spice people, I'm just kidding, you have to really love pumpkin for this because this is the dominant flavor. I'm gonna go ahead and sample one of these rice balls. Mm. They're chewy. <laughs> to be expected. Mm. Like, is it like really, really pumpkin? Or like, mm. Has that again? Is it like really, really pumpkin? Like yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. My cameraman asked me if it was really, really, really pumpkin y. And yes, it's really, really pumpkin y, except for the rice ball. Um, which is very chewy, but but wonderful and very well made. Mm. Let's go ahead mm, and give it a couple of garnishes. I'm going to add the dates. Um, I still actually, I look forward to the toasted um, sesame uh, just because I think adding a little bit of that smoky flavor will actually, uh, toasted smoky flavor will actually taste quite good. Mm. Yeah, 
quite delicious. Yeah, mm, I love this. I highly recommend that you check out this book. If not, just to like follow this recipe, then just to read it. It's such a beautiful book. There's so many great recipes in there. It was so hard choosing a recipe. And after trying this, I highly suspect that all of them are going to be fabulous. Well, I hope all of them are fabulous. I can't say for sure, but. Mm. Oh, yeah, I highly recommend the smoky flavor. Toasted. Yeah, yeah, the toasted smoky flavor, yeah. I say smoky, the toasted flavor. Mm. I would go a little bit light on those though, because it is very powerful and um, uh, just, it could overpower the um, pumpkin flavor as it generally does. So, sorry, I was trying to get the last one, which is pine nuts, again, optional. Oh yeah. Highly recommend all garnishes. I would be quite curious what a toasted pine nut tastes like. The black sesame will taste like so. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> that went down the wrong pipe as I was trying to talk to you. So thank you for joining us today in the kitchen. I was so happy that you could join us for this cook uh, through of Cook Korean by Robin Ha. I highly recommend picking that up, checking it out from your local library. I highly re recommend making the soup. It's beautiful weather or porridge. That's what she calls it. Porridge. My apologies. Um, I highly recommend it. It's a spectacular dish for this time of year. Again, have a happy Comic-Con, everybody. Oh, <laughs> the reaction. Uh, you got me nervous. <laughs> oh, this is... Oh, it's, it's different than I thought it was going to be. Well, it's got a, it's, it's richer than I, than I thought it was a, I thought it was going to be more, I thought it was going to be like pungent and sweet, but, but it had a, it had a deeper mix to it. I didn't, I didn't see that coming. Did you got, like to add any garnishes? Oh, it was just one second. I got to try the spice ball first. Mm. You know, a rice ball, not a, a rice ball itself doesn't have like its own flavor, but but it takes the flavor from the broth, which is pretty nice. Mm -hmm. And they're really hot. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I'm to try a bit of this. toasted. Do you mix it in or, or okay. I like how you I like how you like how you sampled each one before. I I almost I would have just if I was up here I would have just added them all in. Magic is so good. <laughs> hmm. That's a, I'm not going to lie, I can't really taste the sesame seeds. Mm -hmm. Not really. Maybe I didn't, maybe I didn't put like as much in as you did, but I think I'm trying to get a couple of more in there. <laughs> oh, every single time I get it on my spoon. No, I, I ain't getting nothing. <laughs> I ain't getting nothing. Mm. But let me let me add the pine nuts. Do they say like what kind of pine tree this comes from, or just like pine nuts? Uh, just, just a a pine tree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, with the rice ball. Hmm. 
with pine nuts, they give a, they give like a solid, a solid, like a crunch almost, like that, like not like, like crunch, crunch, but like, like, you know, like it's a, a texture. that's true, yes, a texture, they give it a different texture, and like, by itself, it doesn't, it doesn't give it a completely different taste, but once you, when you bite into them, it, it adds, it, it like, it, it's like a, like a, like a, like a, like a whole new, like a whole new flavor, and it's like it's like added into it. Mm -hmm. It's pretty nice. But now the dates. So I didn't think there were different kinds of dates. I thought I thought dates were all kind of. Oh. What happened? <laughs> like it like disappeared. I dropped it, and it just, I just, it just. Uh, eh, okay. Dates are dense, I guess. All right, mix that up. Yeah, those dates are, that's really good, with the dates. You know, that, that, like, uh, how do I explain it? It's like, like the, uh, like the soup, it's, the broth itself, like, has the look of the sweetness, and it has, like, the, it has almost the bass. It's almost like, it's almost like, it, like, in music, like, th like, that would be, like, the bass clef. But the, but the dates bring the, bring the treble, they bring, like, the melody, and it's, it gives it that nice sweet. It, it completes it a bit. I mean, the sesame and the pine. I mean, that was that was good stuff. And it, and it adds a different texture and slight and slightly different flavor. But the dates, if you had the dates with the with the with the pumpkin, I mean, that would be that would be complete to me at least. That is that is good stuff. <laughs> 